This is your cosmic briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please stand by. The Urantia Book for Dummies Civilization in Crisis, Chapter 2, Section 2. In the Urantia Book, we read. The purpose of all education should be to foster and further the supreme purpose of life, the development of a majestic and well-balanced personality. Previously, we learned from the Urantia book this. Evolution and culture become related as cause and effect. Cultural civilization does not flourish without an adequate background of antecedent or previous human civilizational progression, a foundation. Evolution advances stage upon stage upon stage, and it's important for one stage to be stable in order for it to birth the next stage. And that's why tearing down a system isn't a good idea. Let's find out a little bit more about this. To do that, we will be using this model that we introduced back in Section 1. It's based upon the work of the paleontologist Pierre Teilhard de Chardin and the work of the great mathematician and philosopher Alfred North Whitehead. Basically, it comes from the field of developmental psychology and the work primarily of Claire Gray, who is a professor of psychology and the originator of the theory of adult human development and human psychological maturity that he called the emergent cyclical levels of existence theory. This was later developed by Don Beck and his work in spiral dynamics and later integral theorist Ken Wilber. The model that we're using here comes from the philosopher Steve McIntosh and is based on his book Evolution's Purpose. This model fully demonstrates the energy of evolution and in particular the energy of the development of the human species. Here's how it works. This spiral represents the full picture of human evolution from the moment we cross the consciousness threshold to become human to the next great leap into the new civilization that we are birthing right now. It tells us about our past, and here the Urantia book is complete and replete. It tells us about our present and what we need to do to have a future. And it tells us about our future and how to get there. What the Urantia book tells us is that we are here on this spiral, and we want to get to the next step. This is the next step. Now, ultimately, we want to get to the top of the spiral, in this great leap forward that scientists today call a type 1 civilization. This represents a number of turns on the spiral that we need to accomplish. The Urantia book calls it the first stage of light and life. The problem that we have is that for now we need to make the next step. The gulf between where we are and where we want to get to is getting bigger and bigger. And if we want to understand how to get here to our future, then we need to understand where we came from and why. And the Urantia book is complete, replete with the details of how we got here and where we're going. When we call a travel agency, the first question they ask is, where are you going? And the second is, where do you want to leave from? So now perhaps we're beginning to see the importance of what we were talking about back in section 1 of chapter 2 when we said that it's not about what's breaking down but what is breaking through which would be closer to what the Urantia book refers to as the various stages of the age of light and life which is more concerned with the development of mind and consciousness than with material energy and power. The Urantia book tells us that there are energy systems in and around our planet that we still have no idea that even exist. 
and the ones that we do know to exist, we still don't have a very good idea of how they work. So now, that answers our first question to our travel agency about where do we want to go. Now let's look at question two. Where are you leaving from? And for that, we go back to our spiral model. What is apparent, and what the Urantia book is telling us, is that we are birthing a new perspective, a new worldview, which is bringing into being a new civilization. So, just as we see the new forest growing up amongst the old forest, and the old forest crumbling as the new forest emerges, so it is with our civilization. This new worldview promises to have a major impact on the history of the 21st century. This spiral of development model demonstrates the conjunction of consciousness and culture and traces the evolution of values through discrete universal stages of development. And by recognizing these sequential stages of development in the evolution of human culture, we can begin to see the next stage of consciousness that is now beginning to appear on the horizon of history. Claire Graves was the first to see how these stages of individual human development are an echo of the stages of human societal history. That is, just as in biological evolution where we see the human fetus grow through the stages of the entire tree of life as it develops in the womb, we can likewise see within the development of each human mind as it progresses through the stages of human life development, from the infant to the child to the teenager to a young adult and then adult. Then, with the winds of time, it seems to move even faster through middle age and onto our senior years. So, just as we can see the development of a human person from an infant to a senior, in a similar manner, we can now begin to understand what we'll call the first level of this spiral of development as it validates the evolutionary levels of the human species, starting with the very first beings to cross the consciousness barrier from the womb of the animal kingdom as our place of origin to the higher consciousness of the human species and then beyond. So as our first ancestors climbed down from their treetop nurseries and took to living on the land, they were faced with huge challenges the like of which we cannot even imagine. They had practically nothing but their fingernails with which to forage, gather food, and fight off predators. They were at the mercy of the jungle, and there is no mercy in the jungle. Here, life was about survival and reproduction. In the Urantia book, the emergence of humans is presented as having occurred about a million years ago from a branch of superior primates originating from the Lemur ancestor. The first humans were said to have been male and female twins called Andon and Fanta, born 993 and a half thousand years ago. These twins were superior anatomically to their parents, but what distinguished them, what made them human, was their potential for being self-conscious of identity, personality, and mind. While they had what today we would call a very limited self-awareness, many new emotions early appeared in these human twins. They experienced admiration for both objects and other beings, and exhibited considerable vanity. But the most remarkable advance in emotional development was the sudden appearance of a new group of really human feelings, what we today would call awe, reverence, humility, and even a primitive form of gratitude. Fear, joined with ignorance of natural phenomenon, was about to give birth to primitive religion. Not only were such human feelings manifest in these primitive humans, but many more highly evolved sentiments were also present in rudimentary form. They were mildly cognizant of pity, shame, and reproach, 
and were acutely conscious of love, hate, and revenge, being also susceptible to marked feelings of jealousy. And and Infanta were vaguely aware that they were more than mere animals due to their possession of personality, and to prevent the possibility of interbreeding, they conspired to move away from their animal relatives and fled north. These early Andonites, as the Urantia book calls them, showed a very markedly clandish spirit. They formed up into what we call family clans. They hunted in groups and never strayed very far from their home site. They seemed to realize that they were an isolated and unique group of living beings and should therefore avoid being separated. They were motivated primarily by food hunger, water, warmth, sex drive, and safety. And they learned quite early by sad experience that in union there is strength. Andon and Fanta had 19 children. Their clans grew and for 20 generations the Andonites developed a language and established the rudiments of human culture until the tribal conflicts and irritations from outside as well as competition for food, forced them to disperse. That was during the Ice Age, and while some groups remained behind, others migrated to the north because of fire, and to the west into what is now Europe. Along the rivers and waterways leading to the North Sea, they established more than 1,000 separate settlements, and for tens of thousands of years, they dwelt along the Somme River in France. And so we see that the price of survival early became association. Primitive society was thus founded on the reciprocity of necessity and on the enhanced safety of association. And human society has evolved in age-long cycles as a result of this fear of isolation and by means of a reluctant cooperation ever since. But the greatest gift that we receive from this stage of human development is the value of the family. Almost everything of lasting value in civilization has its roots in the family. The family was the first successful peace group. The man and woman learning how to adjust their <laughs> antagonisms while at the same time teaching the pursuits of peace to their children and passing on the information necessary for survival from generation to generation. Here we can see that the function of marriage in evolution is the insurance of race survival, not merely the realization of personal happiness. This has been a Cosmic Briefing, a short clip from the Urantia Book for Dummies. Please click the subscribe button above and then follow these links for a full presentation of this briefing. Thank you.